As Warren Buffett said, it's good to learn from your mistakes, but it's better to learn from the mistakes of others. Many medical students make easily avoidable mistakes simply because they fail to ask questions or make the necessary research to ensure that they don't repeat the mistakes of those ahead of them in medical school. Believe it or not, medical school is hard, and the more mistakes you avoid, the easier it becomes. You don't always have to make mistakes of your own to learn from it. The key to being successful in medical school is by finding trusted sources of advice on everything you will experience, such as tips on how to tackle difficult courses and how to pass the exams, effective learning techniques to help you remember nearly everything you study in medical school, and how to stay healthy while keeping up with the enormous workload medical school will throw at you. The time you spend in repeating avoidable mistakes can be used to achieve more meaningful things. If you avoid the mistakes we will be sharing with you in this video, you will have a much more easy journey through medical school whether you are just starting medical school or you are in your first few years of medical school. Hello there, this is Medzone TV, home to medical school excellence. Medzone TV is an online medical community that presents you with a series of web-packed activities ranging from captivating stories, top-notch medical content, fascinating videos, quizzes, monthly challenges and a lot more you can't afford to miss. In today's video, we will be sharing with you 6 biggest mistakes many medical students make during their journey through medical school. Please sit back, relax and listen. The first mistake that a lot of medical students make is failing to start early. The most effective way to ensure success in medical school, that is, learning and getting good grades, is to prepare early. Prepare for each test, each class, each assignment and stop procrastinating or putting off studying until the last minute. Begin early, if possible, start studying on the first day or week of classes. Medical school as we all know is hard and managing studies alongside clinical postings, dissection classes, practical classes, demonstrations and other activities needs a strategic approach. Even though exams may seem far away at the beginning of the session, the earlier you start studying, the more prepared you will be. Not only will you be less stressed and more prepared during the exam season, but your examination grades are usually so much better than students who delay studying until the last minute. Starting early allows you time to really learn the material and understand it rather than just cramming the information contained in the material for the sake of exams. You can read and learn the context of the material in your own time and not feel anxious or depressed as the exam draws closer. Having time on your side means that you can try out different study techniques than just sticking to one that might not be working for you. Being prepared helps you feel more confident, especially when you know how much work you have put in in preparing for the exam. You get to take your time with revision and avoid last minute cramming or rushing through the topics. You can revisit the material and review it at spaced interval to promote retention. You can quiz yourself on the learned material to force your brain to recall the information as many times as possible. The earlier you start studying, the more time you will have to complete past questions from previous years and get used to the format of exam and test questions. Having excess time means that you can go back to areas you are finding particularly difficult and get some friends and senior colleagues to teach you these areas to reinforce your understanding in those areas or topics. Most of the students who struggle in medical school are students who usually delay studying or postpone studying until the last minute. The second mistake that many medical students make is being inconsistent or lacking discipline in studying. Not only is it important that you start studying on the first day or week of classes, it is also important that you create a consistent daily study routine. Consistency is the key to success. You must be consistent with your studies to be successful in medical school. Instead of trying to finish the embryology of the entire gastrointestinal tract in one day, study a little every day. When you're feeling low or not in the mood to study, go to the library or class with a friend and study with him or her. Do a group study session with friends and discuss about the chapters you have studied and ask each other questions so that participation from all the members can increase and it's more of an active studying rather than a passive reading. Watch medical videos of your favorite topics on YouTube when you are bored or visit our website or check out our social media pages for fascinating medical content when you don't feel like studying. Find your motivation. Finding your motivation can help you stay consistent to your goal. Schedule specific time throughout the week when you are going to study and then stick to your schedule. When you study at the same time each day and each week, studying will become a regular part of your life 
you will be more mentally and emotionally prepared for each study section and each study section will be more productive. Never procrastinate your planned study section. Don't watch a movie or decide to sleep and wake up when it is time for you to study. Don't put off your study section because of lack of interest in the subject or because you have other things you need to get done or because you find the course or topic very difficult. If you procrastinate your study section, your studying becomes less effective and you may not accomplish everything you aim to accomplish. Another common mistake that many medical students make is to focus more attention on particular courses they find interesting while being nonchalant about difficult courses or courses they find boring. This attitude is quite common amongst medical students during their journey through medical school. They would allocate more study time to courses they enjoy studying while neglecting the courses they find boring or extremely difficult. For example, a medical student might enjoy studying human physiology a lot or dislike studying medical biochemistry or find ghost anatomy too boring. Now because this particular medical student enjoys studying physiology a lot, he or she might decide to study physiology 3-4 to four times a week by studying medical biochemistry or anatomy only once or twice a week, forgetting that he needs to pass biochemistry just as much as he needs to pass physiology. Such a student becomes exceptionally good in physiology but horrible at medical biochemistry or anatomy depending on how badly they neglected the course. At the end of the day, you find such a student passing only physiology while failing the other courses he or she neglected or gave little or no attention to. As medical students, you should learn to give all the courses you are offering equal attention and not favor one course over the other or neglect one course for the other. In fact, you should find a way to study those courses you find boring or those courses giving you a hard time more rather than allocate less study time to them. Understand that some courses in medical school consume more time than others and learn to allocate study time bearing this in mind. For example, learning anatomy may be more difficult and might take considerably more time than physiology because it contains complex information that requires three-dimensional visualization in order for it to be understood. So you might want to allocate more study time to studying anatomy than physiology. We have a video on how I studied and learned anatomy in medical school. I will be leaving the link to the video in the description in case you are interested in watching the video after you are done watching this video. Moving on, another common mistake that many medical students make is using too many resources when studying. Don't fall for the trap that you have to read all the medical textbooks or resources out there for you to be successful in medical school. Using too many resources can be detrimental to your studies. Do your research and know what resources are best for you. Your study slides and one to two textbooks is more than enough for you. You don't have to buy all the medical textbooks available in physiology and read them cover to cover for you to perform exceptionally well in a physiology exam. The truth is, if your medical school is way more into examining students based on the lecture slides and materials, then there is probably no need for you to go into great details when studying textbooks. If your medical school uses more of the problem-based learning approach, then you might need to study your textbooks in greater details to be able to pass your exams well. The problem of having too many study resources is that it gets really overwhelming very quickly. Also, the reference values or ranges for different physiological parameters such as blood pressure, body temperature, heart rate, serum hormonal levels and various electrophysiological signals may vary from textbook to textbook depending on the different regions of the authors. Some of these values may be recognized by the examiners in your school, whereas some of them might not be. Providing such reference values in an exam that are not in keeping with the acceptable reference values that have been taught in your medical school might negatively impact your performance in the exam. If you are still watching this video at this point and probably finding it helpful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Moving on, another common mistake that many medical students make is not knowing how to study properly. Finding the best way to study is not something that happens in one night. By being consistent in studying, you are constantly improving your study skills to better understand what works for you and what does not. Mastering effective study techniques will help you to get better grades in medical school and avoid panic and frustration that comes with an exam. A lot of medical students forget most of what they spend hours reading within a few days or weeks because they do not know how to study properly. We already have a video on how to study properly so that you can remember nearly everything that you read in medical school. In the video, you will learn various effective learning techniques such as active recall and spaced repetition and how to integrate these study techniques into your study plan. I will be leaving the link to the video in the description. Please click the link to watch the video so that you can learn how to study properly. 
the last mistake many medical students make is studying for exams alone. Being a loner in medical school is a dangerous place to be in. A lot of information circulates when you are in company of friends and colleagues. When you are a loner in medical school, medical school can be so much more difficult as you don't have anybody to ask questions or study with. You have to get used to being your own best friend. When fun events happen, you have no one to tell you about it or force you or motivate you to attend such events. You have to ignore all social opportunities because you have no friends. Sometimes, some of your classmates don't even know you. Having classmates around you who are studying or doing similar tasks as you can help keep you more focused. It can help you be more productive and get a better understanding of certain topics or chapters you would have found difficult ordinarily on your own. A good study group can make learning more engaging and enjoyable. In short, it makes learning an enjoyable experience that helps improve your academic performance. And that's all for this video. Thank you so much for staying with us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel as it helps the channel grow. Also, please don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues as I'm quite sure that there are people in your circle that will find the information contained in this video valuable.